I need to use. Now, this is the topic that we are starting right now, error checking methods. And you can see following transmission, there's always the risk that the data has been corrupted, that the risk is always there, or it has changed in some form. So then what comes to my rescue is that I should be going for some methods that are going to be dealing with the uh, and with ensuring that data has been received accurately by the receiver. Like, for example, I'm the sender and you are the receiver. So in order to ensure that both the sender and the receiver are able to communicate properly, they are able to send and receive the data properly, we have to ensure some certain things in normal life as well. And what we normally do is we go for some sort of acknowledgements, like I am delivering the lecture. And once I'm through with, the, with my lecture, I normally ask a few questions. And those questions are always asked to ensure that the students have understood my topic or not. And that is what we are talking about right now with respect to error detection. Assume that I delivered and I asked the questions from the students. They didn't answer me properly. What should I be doing then? I should be repeating the process or I should be resending the process. I should be resending the material. And that resending is only possible if I have taken the acknowledgement from your end. You not replying properly means that the thing is wrong. And then I'll be going for a uh, for a for a re repeat in uh, process. process. That is what is the. Now we're going to talk about the method that we employ. We uh, we use to ensure that the data has been received properly by the receiver. These are four methods. First one is parity. Second one is ARQ. Third one is checksum, which I discussed right now with you. And fourth one is echo check. So let's start with parity. A very simple method that uh, is going to be understood here. First thing is parity checking. It's a method that is used to check whether data has been changed or corrupted following transmission from one device to another. Like I'm the sender, you are the receiver. Corruption can take place due to any reason. And our job is to ensure that data has been received accurately by the receiver. In that what we do, a byte of data, for example, is allocated a parity bit. Now byte is composed of eight bits and the eighth bit or the most significant bit is the parity bit. The, the most significant on the extreme left-hand side is a parity bit. And this is allocated before the transmission is beginning. Like before, like for example, if I talk about uh, our conversation, before we started the lecture, maybe we can decide ourselves that which uh, language will, will I use. Maybe I can say I'm going to use a combination of both English or Urdu. Or maybe I can say if my student is uh, maybe only understanding English, he doesn't understand Urdu then definitely my, uh, my all explanation will be in English. So this is what it is always happening, that before the communication begins, we decide the uh, everything beforehand. We don't uh, leave anything in the middle. We always define, decide beforehand. So what we do is we decide the parity also beforehand, that which parity will I be using? Will it be even parity or odd parity? And that is really very interesting. You can see for yourself, this is the whole byte composed of eight bits. And in these eight bits, the first seven bits are there. And then what we do, the principle is very simple to remember. The principle is we actually count the number of ones, whether it's setting is odd parity or even parity. In both scenarios, we check the number of on bits. Assume that I've set the even parity setting and my number of on bits is one, two, three, four. Four is itself an even, even. number. That is why a zero will be added here. Just yes say that it's going to be an even parity. On the contrary, if the same was an odd parity, it will be adding a one here. One. It should be actually keeping it to be total of on which should, Five. Be, uh, uh, should be an, an odd. Now, one, uh, one problem with parity is we do not know, like for example, assume that I am the sender and you are the receiver. I sent, uh, I set the parity as odd parity and I sent all ones. Or maybe I, I sent uh, six ones and a zero. And definitely if it was, it was odd parity setting, you will add a one there to make it odd. What happened? You were the receiver and you received the data in a different style. Like they were, the, the bits have swapped their positions. So what happens then? Although the parity will be the same, but the data is not the same. I sent something different and you receive something different. So what comes to my rescue then is the parity block. Now, please remember, if the question says that what the problem of the parity bit is, you can say simply parity bits problem is if two bits have, have interchanged their positions 
then the parity value remains the same. The parity value does not change. And that is the problem with the parity. And that is actually corrected with the help of a parity block. Let me explain you this example. And then you can do the uh, activity later. This example is very simple. Just try to understand. The bytes are traveling together. And you can see these are bytes. Byte number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And these are along with this. You can see for yourself. Assume this is one whole byte. And this whole byte has 8 bits. Out of these 7 are the data bits. And the 8th one is the parity bit. So what happens then is these all bytes are going to travel, travel together. And along with that, those bytes, one more byte will be traveling and that will be called the parity byte. And this byte is calculated from all the bits movement. And you can see for yourself what happens is, first of all, calculation is done horizontally or row wise. Then we find out the error in byte number. And then we do the same process vertically or bit wise. And then we look at where the problem is in the column or the bit number. And the intersection tells me the problem area. Like, let's let's do it. The parity setting is done here, and they are stuck us that it's the even parity. We can see that it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Byte number one is correct. If I move down, byte number two, this is also correct because it has one, two, three, four. Byte number three is also correct because it is dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six. Byte number four is also correct two. because it is dealing with two. Byte number five is also correct because it is dealing with one, two, three, four. And byte number six is also correct because it two. is dealing with one, two. Byte number seven is also correct because it is dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six. And byte number eight is a problem because you can see for yourself it's dealing with one, two, three. Three. It should have been a one, but a mistake is there. But we are not able to detect when I'm going byte wise, I can't detect. And that is why what we do next is we find out bit wise. We did first vertical, horizontally, and now we are going to do it vertically. And here we found the area, the problem area was in bit number five. So what we do normally is we first look at the, the problem row wise, in byte. With the problem uh, bit, bit wise or column wise, and the intersection tells me the problem area. So here I can sometimes be asked to identify the problem. I can also be asked to make the correction. And I can also be asked to explain what, how do, how did I get the answer? So we need to be very, now the, method, the second method is ARQ. And I'm going to explain it in very simple terms. ARQ is automatic repeat request. And that is dealing with two terms, acknowledgement and timeout. Like for example, acknowledgement. Right now I talked about the term acknowledgement. Acknowledgement means that ensuring the data has been received accurately. And definitely, I'm going to wait for a certain time period. I'm not going to expect the acknowledgement to come from your end immediately. And that is called the timeout. You can see for yourself, the terms are defined here. Acknowledgement is a message sent by the receiver indicating that the data has been received accurately. And I have to wait for a certain time period. And that time period is allowed to last before the acknowledgement is received. I'm yeah, if the time the limit is over, the acknowledgement is automatically sent. I'm talking about... The third one, checksum. I'm going to briefly talk about this checksum, which uh, is basically the main idea. For example, I and right now we we have we are aware of the term data packet. So I'm the sender and you are the receiver. So my data packet is receiving received by you before the data packet packet is sent. So we are going to go with some process that is called checksum calculation, and the same checksum calculation will be will be done on your end too. Now I'm the sender. I calculate checksum. I send along with the data packet. You are the receiver, you have received the checks, you have received the data package. So you will also be doing the same checksum calculation. If the two checksums are matching, it indicates that the data has been received accurately and there is no need to resend that data. But in case the checksums do not match, then in that scenario, I will have to send that particular packet only to the receiver to ensure the safe transmission, the secure transmission between the senders and the receivers. So that is the very brief description of checksum. And we do get a question regarding checksum that what checksum is doing. So I hope that this is very much clear. And now moving on to the last one that is echo check as the name implies echo is in real life also. Like for example, if I am in the in a room that is empty. Oh, uh, wait, 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 before we go forward. Now the last one, uh, the last one is echo check and you can see echo check is basically the same as echo in real life. So with this echo check, I'm the sender, you are the receiver. 
So you are going to send me the data back exactly the same data as I sent to you. And but the problem with echo check is we are not sure when the error occurred, whether the error occurred yeah. when it was sent from the sender to receiver or from the re 